the last year or so has been incredibly hard for a lot of reasons. What do you want to learn from it? The pandemic has eased enough for many colleges and universities to hold in-person commencements. This week, President Biden spoke in person at the United States Coast Guard Academy in Connecticut. And today, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin addressed the graduating cadets of the U.S. Military Academy at West Point. Like all speakers, they imparted words of wisdom to encourage the graduates as they start the next chapter of their lives. This year has been a crash course for most of us. We learned more about criminal justice, American government, and public health administration than we probably ever wanted to. But there was no choice but to learn like our lives depended on it, because they did. The good news is we can learn a ton from what we all went through. And this year's speakers had some great insights. For example, we've dealt with a lot of loss and death in the last year. It's been almost 10 years since the death of Apple's co-founder, Steve Jobs. On Monday, his widow, Laureen Powell Jobs, spoke to graduates of the University of Pennsylvania. She explained what Mr. Jobs' death taught her about grief. We do not pass through grief and leave it behind. Instead, I found, we integrate it, along with the joyful memories all the laughter, all the love, into who we are. One of life's most beautiful dimensions is integrating those you've loved and lost into your own being. We see more, and we understand more, and we love more. The love we have for the people and the things we lost motivates many of us to work harder, to be our best, and to rise as high as we can. But what do you do when the best version of you is not what others want? That's what radio host Charlemagne the God focused on in his speech at South Carolina State University. He urged graduates of this historically black university not to be silent or even quiet. That's why I need all you sisters, I need all you brothers to walk into the next phase of your lives loud. If you think you're being loud now, be louder. If you think you're making noise now, make more noise. If you're scared, say you're scared and break free from fear. That's how you change the world. See, I'm not afraid of being loud. If you've been following me for years, you know that. I'm more afraid of being silent. See, being silent will haunt you. You'll think about the times you should have spoken up, but you didn't. And that will haunt you because in, in, in that moment that you didn't speak up, you made it harder for the person coming behind you because now they're going to have to deal with the same issues that you could have handled right then and there. See, I can't fault anybody for what they don't know, but I will fault myself for not teaching them. Both Charlemagne the God and Laureen Powell Jobs are talking about the people we become as we make our way through life. How does our job fit into that? If no one has said this to you lately, let me say it to you and myself right now. No matter how good you are at your job, you are not your job. It's easy to forget that, especially if people love you for your job. More people are loving the job that Dr. Kizmikia Corbett has been doing at the National Institutes of Health. Years of research her team has done on coronaviruses paved the way for today's vaccines. Dr. Corbett warned this year's graduates of her alma mater, the University of North Carolina, not to confuse what they do with who they are. Everyone in that stadium is now a Tar Heel, but your being The pieces of you that are unparalleled to anything that anyone else has to offer will come from remembering from where you came, from where you conquered, here at UNC and every other step along the way. Today, as you sit there perhaps nervous about your future or uncertain about what is to come, remember that you are exactly where you are supposed to be. You are going exactly where you are destined to go. I think that's comforting, knowing that our journey as people still guides us, even into the uncertain or unsettling parts of our lives. But how do we deal with those tough days, the ones where we wish exams were the only thing stressing us out? There was some good advice about that in a commencement speech at the University of South Carolina given by its president, Bob Caslin. Just one problem, though. He plagiarized it. President Caslin got caught lifting a paragraph from the commencement address of retired Navy Admiral William McRaven. That led to Mr. Caslin's resignation. That and the fact that he called his school the University of California in his speech. 
Now, the plagiarism is bad enough, but what's worse is that he stole one of the least insightful parts of an extremely insightful speech. Admiral McRaven oversaw the Navy SEAL raid that killed Osama bin Laden. His address focused on what he learned in the SEALs about how to change the world. And it's all stuff that anyone can do, starting with one of the requirements of SEAL training, making your bed perfectly every morning. If you make your bed every morning, you will have accomplished the first task of the day. It will give you a small sense of pride, and it will encourage you to do another task, and another, and another. And by the end of the day, that one task completed will have turned into many tasks completed. Making your bed will also reinforce the fact that the little things in life matter. If you can't do the little things right, you'll never be able to do the big things right. And if by chance you have a miserable day, you will come home to a bed that is made, <laughs> that you made. And a made bed gives you encouragement that tomorrow will be better. So if you want to change the world, start off by making your bed. We have a lot more to learn in the years ahead to adapt to our changing world. COVID may well have been just a dress rehearsal for the next global challenge. A made bed is a good start. But I learned something about taking on big new tasks a few years ago. That was the subject of my commencement address to the Washington, D.C. area graduates of Virginia Tech. Two years ago, I learned to ride a motorcycle. The two-day course was amazingly difficult. Only half of us passed. During a break in the course, I overheard our instructor complaining about how adults are often the worst students. We think we know everything, so we don't want to listen when someone tells us we're doing it wrong. Now, granted, she didn't care. Motorcycles can be risky, and she ain't going to pass somebody who's not ready. I never would have passed the class if I had not realized something at the end of day one. What my instructor said was right. As a journalist, I'm experienced, battle-tested, cool under pressure. My work is all-consuming, so I spend most of my life in expert mode. And that's when it hit me. I have reached a point in my life where I am so accustomed to being an expert that I completely forgot how to be a student. And more to the point, because my ego would not let me do it. Many people spent a lot of this last year rejecting new knowledge. I hope we remember how to remain humble before the unknown, how to stay open when fear makes us want to close ourselves off in comfortable ignorance. Learning lasts as long as life. If you're living, you're learning. Let's welcome the challenge. Though personally, I hope life gives us at least the summer off. With that said, we'd love to hear from you. If you could give a commencement address this year, where would you give it and what would your message be? Email us, theweek at msnbc.com. Tweet us at theweekmsnbc. If you did give a commencement address, we'd love to know about it. Either way, give us your name and where you live, and we'll share some of your words of wisdom tomorrow.